from this. Um, so it is really special and I, I'm so glad that I have the opportunity to represent Team USA and that I fought tooth and nail to the finish. Team USA is really deep, so getting to represent Team USA at the Olympics is incredibly special. To this. So happy, I can't believe it. And, and it, everything just went according to plan. We did everything right. It's so many hours and weeks of months of hard work that people don't see, and so I really do feel like I, I earned it, but at the same time, I can't, I can't believe that I have an Olympic gold medal right now. It's pretty obvious what had transpired in the women's 200-meter final in Paris, but faced against the best of the best, minus the Jamaican legends. Winning the 200-meter Olympic gold was no easy feat. It was a long time coming, though. Her recent Paris win allowed Gabby Thomas to upgrade her Tokyo bronze to gold. This win comes after a string of falling short of gold in major title races. At the Tokyo Olympics, she took bronze. In her next big ticket race, the 2023 Worlds, it was a silver. Now in Paris, she's got her gold. What a fitting not quite end in her journey to the top, right? From the moment she landed in the City of Light, Thomas was the clear woman to beat. That said, the pressure for her to perform well was sky high. Even Gabby is aware of this, as she said, there's definitely some added pressure going into this Olympics. Once you've already had success, people are kind of waiting for you to mess up. Good for her though, she did not mess up. Far from it, actually. From the moment the starting pistol was fired, she was in charge. I just knew that I had it, she said moments after her gold winning run. It was a confidence that you can't really describe. Of course, there was pressure, but I felt confident. The Paris Olympic title secures the 14th gold medal for the US in the Olympic women's 200 meter, which breaks a 13-13 tie with Jamaica for the most in history. Notably, no Jamaican earned a 200 meter medal this year for the first time since 1976. Needless to say, the 27-year-old American sprinter has endeared herself to the American public, not just with her command of the track, but also with her extraordinary public health work. She volunteers weekly at a volunteer healthcare clinic in Austin, Texas, which provides primary care to children and adults without access to such care. A lot of people can say they want to do things, but Gabby is actually doing this work at a high level, said the clinic's director of volunteer services, Laura Hurst. I don't think you can underestimate the power of what one person can do. For Thomas, what drives her is pretty simple and straightforward. It's so fulfilling because we're actually making a direct impact, and these are people who really do have a need for healthcare, she said. Although she is dedicated to her craft, her volunteering work in this case, she is equally dedicated to her sport. As she has volunteered her time, Gabby has remained laser-focused on her on-track mission, 200-meter Olympic gold. The fact that she was able to balance her two worlds, so to speak, is more than amazing. Winning gold at the same time is just simply remarkable. From beginning to end, Gabby Thomas was dominant on the track in Paris. When round one of the women's 200-meter wrapped up, it was Gabby who earned the top time with a mark of 22.20. In fact, it's pretty obvious that the two-time Olympic medalist had a relatively easy time halfway around the track when she won her first round heat in the women's 200. Thomas was in heat two and ran out of lane number five. Jamaica's Nisha Berger ran a 22.54 to finish second, and Switzerland's Mujinga Kambanji took third, running a 22.75. Meanwhile, St. Lucia's Julian Alfred breezed through her opening round heat of the women's 200, just a day after winning the biggest race of her life and earning her country's first ever medal. She was as strong in the 200 meter as she was in the race she won the previous day. Alfred led around the curve, jogged with about 15 meters left and crossed the line with a time of 22.41 to win the first heat of the women's 200. The fact that reigning world champion Sharika Jackson was missing at the event did not go unnoticed. Apparently, she withdrew due to injury. From there, Gabby, Julian, and others were off to the semifinal. There, Gabby once again sent an emphatic statement to her rivals in the Olympic women's 200 meter as she cruised to the fastest time in the semifinals. 
she pulled away from the field with ease over the final 50M to cross the finish line, smiling in 21.86 seconds. Julian Alfred, on the other hand, clocked the second quickest time of 21.98. And then there's the 200 meter final. Without Jackson in the running, it was obvious that the race to gold was between Thomas and Alfred. At this point, people were beginning to wonder if Alfred would end up bringing home two gold medals, or if Gabby would finally earn her coveted Olympic gold. As Julian's dream of winning her country's first Olympic gold has already been achieved, it's only fitting that Gabby gets hers this time. That is not to say that claiming gold had been easy, but Gabby did it anyway. The 27-year-old burst out of the blocks, hurtling through the first 100 meter as she caught and overtook Alfred on the lane outside of her. As she blazed down the finishing straight, Thomas built a commanding lead as her formidable top end speed took her all the way through the finish line. As she crossed the finish line in front of a bellowing 80 strong crowd, the new Paris 2024 Women's Olympic 200 meter champion's expression encapsulated the entirety of a night filled with shocks, surprises, and wow moments at the Stade de France. I'm really in disbelief because having an Olympic gold medal is something in my wildest dreams, she said. But at the same time, I know how hard I fought for it. And I envision this race over and over from start to finish. Um, I haven't been envisioning it ever since. She did, really. So it's not surprising to see her cross the finish line first in front of 100-meter gold medalist Julian Alfred of St. Lucia and Thomas's fellow American Brittany Brown, who crossed the line at 22.08 and 22.20 respectively. It hadn't been easy, but the sight of familiar faces in the crowd gave the now three-time Olympic medalist the boost she needed to fight her way to the top of the podium. When I walked out in the stadium and I knew I had all my friends and family here, I just knew that I had it," Gabby shared. You know, I mean, it, it, so many emotions all at once. I, I could not have anticipated what my reaction would have been. It was just so many emotions flooding me, just happiness, joy, pride, um, disbelief, shock, all at once. And um, it was the happiest moment of my life. Finally winning gold and adding it to her collection was not the only highlight of the day, as she once again etched her name in history books. After all, only one other U.S. woman, 2004 champion Allison Felix, has won the Olympic 200-meter title in the past 28 years. What's more, 2012 was the last time three American women were in the 200-meter dash Olympic final, won the event, and had two athletes make the podium. This year, Thomas Brown and three-time NCAA champion Mackenzie Long were in the final. Thomas reigned victorious, and Brown joined her in obtaining a medal. Many may view Brown's podium finish as random or lucky. However, Brown has been a force since 2019, so even though she has been counted out for quite some time, she continues to make teams and earn medals. Uh, it feels amazing um, to be around these women, to be a part of this class of women um, in the U.S. Uh, it's something that, you know, you aspire to be when you're growing up. At the end of the day, it was a good day for Team USA, literally. In the space of an hour, American track and field athletes picked up two golds, a silver and two bronze medals. Cole Hawker and Yared Nugusa were yet another gold-bronze duo while a silver came from Annette Neneka Achikunwok in the women's hammer throw. At the end of the day, here I, I want to inspire the youth to continue to find their passions and be successful. I want them to feel encouraged to pursue their dreams, no matter how big or small. And I hope when they look at me and they see what I do, they're inspired to work hard. Here's what happened in Paris so far. 